Introducing the iPad Air Pro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So this is the iPad Pro second generation. I just bought this. So this was Apple's iteration of the iPad Pro second gen before the completely redesigned iPad Pros. It was a really interesting model to release in the first place because Apple did shrank the bezels on the smaller iPad Pro, but kept all the same sizing factors on the larger size. As soon as the third generation came out, they changed everything. They changed the sides, they changed the camera, they changed the display, and removed Touch ID and put Face ID in it. Really, the question is, why did I buy this instead of buying the third generation iPad Pro or the iPad Air if I really wanted to save some money? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you four reasons why you and myself would slash should buy this instead. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first reason is going to be the display. In terms of the display resolution of the 11 inch iPad Pro and this 10.5 inch iPad Pro, it is remarkably the same. Like keep, keep my warning, they're pretty much the same and you really don't notice it. When they're side by side, the liquid retina display does have a deeper contrast, but it's not enough to where I was like, okay, let me spend an additional $200 just so I can have that display. Like it's definitely the, a really nice display and it's gonna be one of the nicest displays you have on a tablet. But at the same time though, is it worth the extra price? It's really not. Now there are benefits of that bigger display, a more screen real estate, you have face ID instead of touch ID and fun stuff like that. Now in terms of the iPad Air, the iPad Pro second gen actually has a slightly higher resolution for the display. Also, for the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, it has ProMotion, which is the same feature that is found in the third generation iPad Pros, but not the iPad Air. That was a big selling point for me. One of the big reasons why I wanted to upgrade was performance, and not having the ProMotion display definitely shifts everything of, okay, what's important to me and what's unimportant to me. ProMotion, definitely important for me. So the fact that I could save a lot of money getting this iPad, and getting the third generation iPad Pro and still have a ProMotion display and a really nice resolution tablet, I got to have best of both worlds. So the second is the camera. In terms of the difference between this camera and the third generation iPad Pro, they're pretty much the same. The iPad Pro third generation has a wider lens, so it is gonna be better at low light. You can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, while this iPad Pro can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second. But at least you have the ability to shoot 4K on this iPad. On the iPad Air, it's gonna be 1080p. Unfortunately, no, no 4K on the iPad Air, which was also a selling point for me. I'm not saying I'm gonna go to like games and stuff and shoot photos with my iPad. The camera is a great backup camera, so if I need to have more than just two cameras open, um, I mainly use my iPhone or my GoPro when shooting video. Whenever I need to use something else, the iPad Pro, I can pull it out, put it on a stand, and start recording. And it actually has pretty decent video quality too. I had a 1080p camera on an iPad Pro before, not fun. So I, I did not want to put myself through that again. Okay, so here's another thing that I totally forgot about. I was about to get the iPad Air, and then I realized this one feature, and I was like, oh, so now it's not just ProMotion Display I'd be using. Speakers. So with the iPad Pro 11 inch and 10.5 inch, they have four stereo speakers. Stereo speakers on the bottom of the iPad and on the top of the iPad. You'd be surprised at the sound quality difference between just dual stereo speakers and quad. It's kind of like having a dual core processor versus a quad core processor. I think I just made it more complicated. 
What does that mean in English? Amazing sound quality for one. B, you don't feel bad when you have it propped up on your kitchen counter, cooking in the kitchen, and you just wanna watch some YouTube videos. You can actually hear the volume on either side if it's more to the left or more to the right of you, you can hear it. Having your iPad portrait mode and watching videos is not very, uh, what's the right phrase? Enjoyable. So the fourth and final reason why I got this iPad Pro versus the iPad Air and versus the 11 inch iPad Pro would be performance. This is where it kind of gets tricky for trying to explain it, or at least it's kind of a stretch. I don't need the fastest iPad available because really I use this for personal use. So like answering emails, taking some random video, sketching, nothing crazy on it other than I just started video editing on it. Video on that coming soon of me trying to edit videos on an iPad Pro. It's fun. It's definitely faster than the iPad Air. I, I know that the iPad Air has the Bionic chip, which is fast, but it's not faster than ProMotion, and it's not faster than the type of processor that's found in the iPad Pro. I feel like Apple should have put the same processor as this one, or a in between this processor and the, the new iPad Pro third generation processor kind of in the middle. What this guy comes into play is it's fast enough to where I can get what I need done quickly, but not to the point where I'm like, oh, let me drop my laptop because this is the best thing I have. I don't want it to be my new laptop, but I do want it to be a laptop replacement or a better word for it, a laptop alternative. But there is no alternative to liking and sharing this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm sorry guys, there's no alternative. It must be done. So, uh, don't do that. So until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood, I, Henry. Catch y'all in the next episode. Matane.